Yes, 10.30, this is Talk Radio UK, broadcasting to the whole of the country, including France, Belgium, Sweden, Holland, and now we're starting to get letters from Italy. Can you believe Portugal? Where is it going on? I mean, they're listening everywhere. It's just a pity that they can't hear us in America. My favourite country. They cannot hear us in America for some unknown reason. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to get the guys here, the engineers, to say, Caesar, we'll turn the transmitters up so much that we can get all the way to Washington and you can make sure and believe that your favourite person of all time will be listening at his home. You see, in all of the broadcasting world and in radio and television, there is one man that I've always admired. One man that I've thought that one day I might just become as big as him. All right, I may have conquered this country, but I could never, ever, ever get anywhere near as being as close as this man. I'm talking about a man who's been on, the, on network radio in the United States for, for many years, before moving to CNN to host the Larry King Live. Now, due to his popularity of his program and CNN, he has become one of the most famous personalities in the world. Larry has interviewed anybody who's anybody. You know, from President Clinton... They queue up to get on his show, and he's very choosy as to, you know, who he gets on his show. This evening, or in our time, early hours of the morning at 2 o'clock, Larry King will be interviewing Maggie Thatcher live. Yes, you heard me right. Maggie Thatcher, what she's doing over there, God knows. She's probably over there, just having her book, you know, get on to Larry King's show, knowing full well that she'll probably get a good plug for her book. We don't know. But this man that I've admired for years... I've actually got the pleasure of saying a very good evening to him live on Talk Radio UK. Larry King, good evening. Caesar, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? I am fine. Listen, it's, it's a great pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> Listen, Larry, I mean, we're talking to you at home at the moment. You're in Washington, D.C.? I'm looking out over the Lincoln Memorial. Hey, I wish I could be with you, believe me. It's a beautiful sight. Larry, tell me something. Now, this evening, you're, you're actually sp you're speaking to Maggie Thatcher. I am. Is she still very big in America? You know, I don't know. She, I would say her popularity lingers. Uh, you know, uh, she was a favorite during the Reagan days, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what reaction we get to her tonight. I know she's, uh, she arrived today. She spoke at the National Press Club this afternoon in Washington, and she's signing books at some huge bookstore this evening. Uh -huh. And her first media appearance in this country will be on our show. And then she's on a swirl through New York and I think Chicago and Los Angeles. Uh, the, her, her first book did very well. It was a major bestseller. This one is about her early days. Yeah. And leading up to election to Parliament and the like. I don't know how well it'll do, but there's enormous interest in... When people talk and gather and talk about world leaders, we, we, we don't have a great many of them. So her name still comes to mind. There are many Americans who would say they would love to meet her. She, she would be a stick out. From what I understand, Larry, I mean, she's a very popular lady in America. The American people just absolutely adore Maggie Thatcher. Yeah, she's, uh, it's her strength. Uh, we like, always have liked strong women. Eleanor Roosevelt comes to mind uh, 60 years ago. Uh -huh. uh, we like women who are, uh, who are forthright as she is. And, of course, conservatives here love her because she was kind of England's Reagan yeah. and vice versa. And uh, liberals look at her with a great deal of respect. And I think there'll be great interest in what she has to say, especially about things like Bosnia and the fall Tom Clinton and uh, Dole and the coming elections and, and her thoughts on Adams coming to this country because he had appeared on our show first. And that'll be interesting to talk to her about that. Now, and it's is my second visit with her. I'm looking forward to it. Ask her, I, I'll tell you what would be very interesting to ask her, if you don't mind me suggesting. Not at all. Uh, we have a, a problem. I'm sure you've heard about the problems that we're having over here. John Major has actually resigned as a leader of the Conservative Party. Not as Prime Minister, but has actually resigned as the leader of the Conservative Party. And there's another election happening on Tuesday. That's a party election. A party election, yeah. Right. Um, he thought that he was going to walk away with this because it seemed that nobody last week actually stood up to him. But then suddenly today, two of the most, well, important politicians in the Conservative government have said, we're standing against him. And it seems that Maggie Thatcher's favourite man, Redwood, is actually standing against John Major. I'm glad you told me because I will... 
I will refer to our conversation tonight, uh -huh. and I will get an immediate opinion from her. Well, Maggie's a, a big fan of mine, apparently, so you, you can send her my regards off mic if you want to. I but sure will. That should be quite interesting, because she, in fact, he was the uh, right-hand man, as to speak, when she was in government, and now he is standing against John Major, which, you know, is making it very, very interesting over here. Now, but what happens if he, if he is elected leader of the party? The possibilities are that John Major will resign as prime minister and he will become the next prime minister. Just like that, without an election? Well, I mean, there will be obviously elections and the MPs will get together and they'll all stand by and say, hey, look, you've lost it as the leader of the Conservative Party. Uh, you might as well resign. Well, he's already, John Major's already publicly said that he would resign as prime minister if he didn't win the by-election on Tuesday. So that would be quite okay, interesting. I will get right. I will move on that immediately. Well, there you go. You'll have something hot. Thank you, Caesar. Hey, one, <laughs> don't thank me. Listen, you're my master. I'm learning from you when I watch your CNN every night. Well, thank you so much. I uh, was thrilled to hear you say that. I, I, I love what I do, and I know you love what you do. You have to love when you do something like that. Absolutely. This. Absolutely. Larry, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? It's, it's just things, things that I've always wanted to know about you, really, more than anything else. You know... Who would you say, in your own opinion, is the most interesting person that you've ever interviewed? Well, you know, I've been doing it so many years. I know. It would be Im literally impossible to pick, to pick someone out. If I, if I was pressed against the wall, I would probably say Sinatra, only because he was so difficult to get. Yeah. He is uh, such an enigmatic figure, and he's a great guest. So once he's on, and, and he was very... He was very open to me and we had a wonderful couple of hours this was in miami i sub subsequently done him a few times so that adding with import and difficulty to get it would be him but god there's been so many interesting people and what about worst who would you say was your worst can i ask you that probably the actor bob mitchum uh he's a wonderful actor i love his work on screen but yeah. he, he I gather he didn't want to be there, or he was just putting me on, uh -huh. because he, every answer was one word. <laughs> no, yes, you know, there's a, there's a the rule. The worst type, yeah. There's a rule in our business that if you ask a question that begins with why, it cannot be answered in one word. Uh -huh. So why is always good to begin a question, because it can't be answered in one word, except Bob Mitchum. I asked him a question and began with why, and his answer was because. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's funny that because, you know, we had the, the situation over the Middle East uh, last year, and I read in a paper, and you were mentioned by Saddam Hussein, who says that you are his favorite broadcaster, and he watches you religiously every night. Did I don't know you? how to take that. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I'm only telling you what he actually came out and said. He said that he really does like you. He loves your program. Well, I... The program's made quite an impact. I pinch myself every day over, over doing that show. I mean, a lot of it was timing, being in the right place, right time, CNN's growth. And uh, I remember standing at... I really didn't feel it until a couple of years ago when I was at the Western Wall in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And <laughs> I, I had never been there. And uh, there was a rabbi, an older rabbi, uh, on his knees praying. And he looked up at me and said, What's with this Perot? <laughs> Blimey. Larry, is there any chance you ever coming over here to England? You know, I was there two years ago on New Year's Eve at a wonderful time, and uh, interesting you should ask, I'm coming in, in September, and I'd love to come over and be on your show. Hey, I'd love you to have, I'd love you if you would come over here, look me up, and come out, and we'll take, go out for some lunch, and maybe you can come on the show, and we can have a, a live face-to-face -face interview, and we can just have a laugh with all the public. Caesar, I'm going to mention you with Thatcher tonight. You watch. Have a brilliant show tonight. I'll be watching. Thank you, man. Hey, God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Larry King, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest name in America. He is a man who I've always admired, brilliant broadcaster. If he came over here, he would walk this country without a shadow of a doubt. This is Tool Radio UK. I'm Caesar the Geezer. We're broadcasting to the whole country. It is voted the number one radio phone-in show in Great Britain. And it's thanks to you for doing just that. Aphrodite is a Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Right, you're only number two to Larry anyway. Oh, and stop you know... it, stop it. He's number one in my book. <laughs> well, he is number one, yes, but you're his number two. Pardon me? You're number two. I'm number two? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did say your, your show is spreading like a religion, and it's bloody true, isn't it? Hey, listen, I can't help if I'm a Greek god. I mean, that's what everybody's telling me. Well, I'm the Greek goddess, so where, <laughs> where you go? Well, after this ad break, I am going to call... Denise Divine Brown. I'm gonna call I'm gonna ask her what sort of conversation took place. Right. The geezer, 25 minutes to 11 o'clock, Talk Radio UK. 
officially the most listened to radio phone-in program in the country. Designed by real people for real people. Every newspaper today, every single national newspaper has covered the story of Hugh Grant and Denise Divine Brown. Hang on a second. I'm on line two. I can't pick it. Where are you? I'm picking it up on line two. Press me up, you idiot. Sorry, my phone ops are trying to get the number through. I haven't got it. It's not jacked up, but filled, is it? Put it on line one. Just put it on line one for me. Hang on a minute. I have a technical problem here. I don't believe he's doing this. All right, okay. Turn it up a bit, please. Denise? Yeah? Denise, this is Caesar from Talk Radio UK. There's an... Devon doesn't live here anymore. You've got the wrong number. Uh, hang on a second. I spoke to her earlier on this number. No, uh-uh. No, I'm sorry. Well, how sorry. did you know I was speaking for Divine? Who am I speaking to? No, she doesn't live here anymore, so stop calling. Uh, listen, love, hang on a second. I spoke to her on this number earlier. <laughs> Hello? I don't believe this. I don't believe she's just hanged up on me. Can you call that number back? I don't believe. She's giving me crap. I spoke to the woman earlier on. Colin, you spoke to her. Get her back on the nine. <sighs> Hang on. While well, they're sorting it out and sorting the woman out, let's just go to some more lines here. Um, <laughs> crazy. He's big. Bad. He's a Greek guy. Oh, my goodness. He's pers pers persistently rated number one. He is Caesar the Geezer. At your service every weeknight from 10. Talking to you and to stars from around the world. Like CNN's Larry King. The biggest name in America. Brilliant broadcaster. Larry, tell me something. This evening you're speaking to Maggie Thatcher. I am. Tell you what would be very interesting to ask her, if you don't mind me suggesting. Not at all. It seems that Maggie Thatcher's favorite man, Redwood, is actually standing against John Major. I'm glad you told me because I will refer to our conversation tonight uh -huh. and I will get an immediate opinion from her. Oh, yeah? Five hours later. We're back on Larry King Live. About five hours ago, I guessed it on a talk show with a guy named Caesar, who's a big fan of yours. I thought I'd pass that along, and he said to me, everyone in Britain is wondering why you haven't endorsed Mr. Redwood to head your party. Well, we have not in the first round of this rather strange election. Talk Radio UK with Caesar the Geezer, a force to be reckoned with around the world. Don't mess, because if I want to speak to somebody, I'll speak to them. And I'll tell you something else which we're lining up. How do you like to know the ins and outs of Frank Sinatra? How would you like to know the ins and outs of Clint Eastwood? These are people that I have been spending all day on the phone today setting up interviews with. And uh, we're trying to organize something in America at the moment where they can go to an American radio station, sit there, and we can communicate via, via an ISDN link. And I don't want to technically confuse you, but it's just a, another form of communication. And it's clear crystal quality as if you're sitting in this opposite studio to me. Uh, but we've got so many things happening that it impresses me. Uh, John! Good evening. Good evening, John. A very good evening to you. Another first for Talk Radio UK. Well, welcome, mate. Where are you? You have to change your logos. It's uh, Scotland, England, Wales and Ireland, and in between. I'm on the Seacat Ferry between and Ireland. Are you... Between where? Between Scotland and Ireland. Is that right? Yeah. Well, you're listening on the ferry? Yes. God bless you, mate. You have to listen on the back end because you can't hear it inside. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, so where are you? you in, you're inside or outside? I'm inside at the moment. We're just docked, actually. Just docking at this moment. What's the weather like? Brilliant. Is it? It's like salt radio. Wonderful. <laughs> God bless you, mate. All right, take care. Thank you, John. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You never know where they're listening. You never know where people are listening.